just gone seven and I'm on my way up to Mosley to go and pick up Mr. Mansley who is accompanying me to the Tatum Park Classic Car Show this morning and this afternoon. And he promises me that he has a gift for me. He also says it's better than beer. What could that be? <laughs> I hope it's not a Rover Revival t-shirt. You just stand here for the whole, well, for another 15 minutes. That's all we'll do, that'd be the video, wouldn't it? Let's leave the tripod. on. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back. Going on for a good, good hour, probably, isn't it? Just cars coming in. Right, I was going to say the game is classic or not classic. Obviously the Corvette is, although it doesn't massively interest me. But the NSU, what you, what that, that, that is uh, absolutely fantastic. But what are you going to call the SV? The SV is technically not a classic, but it is a classic. That, that one is fantastic. You, you win, sir. That's nice. The SV... Uh, I'm going not a classic, but will be. Yep. At the Bentley, and then not. no, not really, no. Not and never will. Be. But he's, he's taking his roof off. And now everybody's going home, I guess. And because there's a Skoda coming in, why is an 06 Skoda at a classic car show? Because the man's got a beard. But we're going to continue the game of is it a classic or not? Triumph, which most definitely is. What a super duper machine that is. And the Vauxhall. Nope, no. It wasn't a coupe, was it? And the Jag 308, long wheelbase. Oh no, it's not, yes, it's not even a Jag, it's a Daimler with a Jaguar private plate. That's like having a beard and identifying as someone who doesn't have a beard. I like this one with its special sound, uh, special glasses on there. They'll, they'll hold the Humber and the dog in the back, of course. And then this. A proper vintage car with a wavy man. A wavy man is what drives a proper old car and a wavy man could drive any car. Yeah, but that one is. That was definitely classic. Um, that one isn't. Sorry. I don't really think the uh, Mercedes is either, really. Not quite. That one's got a steering wheel on the wrong side. And now the old Tom and Jerry classic itself the big Zephyr with the pointy ears. One of my favourites. Oh, that dog's having a right good time in the back of there. Laughing away. And that's that. Make sure we know you're British. Yes, a ZT. Yeah. Is it a Z no, it's a Rover ZT, isn't it? In monogram. It's a bit too tall to be a ZT, isn't it? Hello. Well, with this one has to be worth a look at, doesn't it? With its special droop snoop face. It looks a bit like uh, somebody's done that in the garage, though. But Craig, I really do like this car, even though I think it's absolutely awful. I really do, I really like it. Burberry like the interior. But there's just something dreadful about it as well. G Maestro! Hey! I've got a picture, I'm filming you right now. <laughs> if we had the Honda versus Alpha competition, which would win? That one is clearly a classic. This one is because you don't see them about any longer. This one's purple. That one isn't. That's a big thing. Super snipe. And another, what are those? Yeah. The yeah. Renault, yeah. Renault yeah. Gordini. <laughs> There's its air intake. It's got wheels that look like alloys, but they're not. And it's got a boot at the front. There's an exciting racing colour. Oh, it's got a nice big 
stainless steel exhaust in the back of there as well. Yeah, stainless steel from the midsection back. It's called light green, isn't it? Light metallic green. Light metallic green or aqua valiente. Aqua verde valiente. <laughs> this car's as interesting as mine, I reckon. What's yours? I've got a Rover 25. Oh, right. Yep, sounds exciting, doesn't it? <laughs> these, I love these swage lines along there. It's very, very butch. It's very, um, it's like they copied that kind of thing about 10 years ago with BMW. Well, it's obviously got the radiator. Really cool. Renault 17. Very much styled on 60s American things like the Mustang Fastback, I reckon, but with a bit of French flair and with three wheel studs because they were sure they weren't going to fall off. And the man's got a beard, which means that he knows what he's doing. I'm going to have to borrow a cap. I'm here all week. I should have done the old. What's this cat called? Whatever you uh, want to call speedy, it. Speedy, I think I called it. I'm going to call it Nigel. I'm going to call it Angry Cat. I'm going to call it. <laughs> I'm going to call it Tracy Beaker. Tracy Beaker. <laughs> this is an award-winning, <laughs> a show-winning MG ZT, not 260, <laughs> but 400 supercharged V8. It's a one-off car in this particular colour, and it is spectacular and if I get enough people liking this video I am promised a test drive well a toilet review for voting I've already done that have you yeah in the Kemikazi yeah the Jaguar section yeah that was the moon shining. Hey, yes, yes, yes. hey. Uh, the 75 is a big car in this country until you park it next to something like that. Now, this is interesting. Not that, this Citroen BX. I like a Citroen BX, that's a nice car. That's an interesting car. It's not necessarily any good, but it certainly is interesting. What is it? I was just about to say, where do you even start with this? What is it? Is it, is it a boat or a car? This one's got to be in the video just because it's an 800 Vitesse. Uh, is it not? Nope. It's a W Reg 45, like mine. That means it's a good one, doesn't it? But it's not got boots, so it's not as good. Uh, it's also not quite as good a colour. But it is nice. So now I'm going to have to say something actually. And it's all because of Matthew and his rather geeky nature. This uh, early Rover 45 has got Mark II seats in it. Oh no! It's Brum. Yeah. Go on, go on there, Matthew. What kind of car is this? Do you know? Uh, I think it's an Austin. I think it's an Austin Type PD, 1932. Just read it. <laughs> I could have done that myself. Well, I know, but you, you didn't ask. Yeah, but I wanted to pick your all, all credit, though. your interesting brain. All credit, though. Look at the size. I've got one seat per ass cheek. How do you think I'd go on? <laughs> I count as two. Do you think that's funny, dear? Good you, just close up. That's really horrible. <laughs> There's loads and loads of Jags over there, but this one is particularly lovely it's obviously a respray what a, what a what a nice respray that is it looks like a it looks like a factory respray to me but obviously it isn't purple or blue yes this one's got um ongoing project it's got a period scuff on the front and it's got the milky headlamps one, I'd, I'd like to have one of these. 
I reckon I need one of these cars. Well, old Vauxhalls then. This one's obviously very interesting. That one, everybody manages to get a picture of. The Cavalier, the Mavano. No, ma, ma, not, they're not a Mavano. Mavano's a van. But the Mark 1 Ash GTE is quite good, as is the Mark 2, and then the Manta as well. Very exciting and good, as is that one. What a rather excellent colour. See, I find uh, the sporty Vauxhalls much more interesting than sporty Fords myself. Oh, how's this, Matthew? It's it's a uh, it's a green Vauxhall. But it, look, it looks like a modern car. It looks like a Vox. No, no, it looks like a Ford Focus ST thingy, doesn't it? That is another one I really like. Oh, a Viva Estate. A Viva Estate, yeah. It's a very, very stylish car indeed. And it's got a hat in the back as well, which is kind of useful. Hats in the wrong place. Well, yeah, because the hat should be on the owner's head. Yes. Right. Spice. Oh, they were before you dip them in. Dip them in 15 chilies and they're fantastic. The parents use one of them in the wedding car. I do like the colour of that, but I don't think I'm allowed in this stand. That's a rather vibrant colour, isn't it? We see here are the Portaloos, located right next to all the Capris. Don't make that mistake. Yep, that's the best place for them. No. Very, very rare spec. Soapy white, isn't it? It's like it's like Dove soap. Yes. Because John has a curious as to why there's a petrol can underneath this car. Come on! You've got to love a triumph, even if you don't like them. When you nearly died driving that bacon sandwich, what was the only help must have gave you? It's like telling you to man up. Go oh, get a grip. <laughs> Typical Ford, you even have to fix it at a show. <laughs> Renault 5 GT Turbo, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Nice car. Ooh. Nice and small. Sure. Meow. Because you don't need a price on it, that's why. <laughs> that's the one. I'm going to look over this naughty sounding car over here. <laughs> cars are just so stupidly big that it just it needs its own show. I have had uh, some Moses from there. Well, I'm quite keen on this big thing, but that one there, like a really big car and an estate car as well, that's about as cool as it gets. That's what I reckon. They look quite modern, those wheels. I reckon the Corsair was actually. Um, Influenced by this. Head up this 
play as well. I quite like it. I quite like that. But I'd rather have another look at this one. Oh, it's got the wrong engine anyway, hasn't it? 4.9. It is what it is. It was meant to be a turn. But that is definitely not hiding what it is. Yeah, uh, well, what else is it supposed to be? Well, it will definitely be a charger. The Trans Am against this. <laughs> this is definitely the cool one. It looks almost like a stretched out Mark 1 Cortina from the front. Notice these. What? Yeah, to tell you that your headlamps are on. To tell you where the end of your car is because that bonnet thing kind of lies. But again, they've all got those tyres on. No, this is really cool <laughs> and that's just... That's no. just pimp. Yeah. We can get that fucking insect out of the way so we'll see the end. Uh, wish Matthew was down here actually, he might be able to tell us a bit about this. It's a monstrous thing. So many creases and cracks everywhere. They're like watching a cathedral. We're in the Rolls Royce area where the Rolls Royces hang about. Not making any noise. If it's the original car, then I'm interested, otherwise, I'm not. <laughs> I wonder if the owner of this car likes stickers. These cars are for sale. And uh, is that the Hansel and Gretel thing? Lovely old, lovely old thing it is. Uh, even more lovely though has got to be this car. Always remind me of a walrus from the back end. Yeah, that's definitely quite orange. Yeah, well, there's the minivan. Looks kind of cool. Come on then. Yeah. British cars always seem to be quite cool. Yes, that's a cool yellow car that looks like a wasp. Wasp. <laughs> very hard to make. It was a very striking car, but. Three spokes. Yeah, I think the wheels. I'm thinking import as well. I think those wheels. That's a nice one. Singer. Yeah, I like a singer. I like a console. I like. Uh, I like a cloud formation as well. We're gonna get some rain soon. <laughs> it's a baseball bat. That's the coolest car here so far. Orange! Oh, he's got pop down headlamps rather than pop up. Uh, telling me that you like this car, Craig. It looks like it's got a bookshelf on the front. Craig would prefer the grey Mustang to the red one. And I think that's a bit strange. I'd prefer that Mini. <laughs> it's not exactly rat look, is it? But it's not uh, a concourse car with it massive be, wheels on it. It needs to be really down in the dirt. 20 inch wheels. I wonder if it's got like hydraulic stuff going on as well. So we've been waiting for a while. That's my brother there. It's a yellow minivan, and I bet it's got a Honda engine in it. You don't want to do this with it, is it? <laughs> This is going to be an exceedingly noisy car, isn't it? One word. What is it? I'm trying to remember his name. Bernard Manning? No. no. You don't see many of these Vauxhall Vectors about these days. Well, orange, yeah, but that turquoise is fantastic. Here's the SD1 of Ford. Come on, wake up, wake up, come on, wake up. That looks like a rather special Dolomite, doesn't it? That's true, that though. Fan of the Dolomite Sprint, but this one looks like it wants to be a Ford. So I don't like it. The thing here, the green one, or the blue one, 
or this one or that one. It's a Nigel replica. It's not, it's just... It's more defensive. I quite like it. Okay. It's like a cross between a Ford Anglia and a Mark I Cortina. A van? Yeah, look at the back end. Well, yeah, no, I don't see what you mean. Be a very low down van, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 26 inch wheels, they're like mountain bike wheels on a pickup. That's horrid. Would you agree? Apparently he doesn't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it is though, isn't it? It's the most modern looking old car going. It looks like it was made for the 90s. But in the 1970s, it's. I've always wanted to see one of these for real. Auto jumble. Bits of cars and clocks and Jaguars and jeans, silly well, head gaskets. Yeah, that is one of the problems with having your money token, isn't it? I'll put it on there. Uh, what's the face? Oh, time lapse. Uh, <laughs> it might be a while. You might be right, actually. Yeah. Except. <laughs> is over I'm on my way home and Craig is no longer with me not that you witnessed any of the fascinating conversation Craig and I had on the way fascinating it was a top secret conversation well when I say top secret I mean it's not something you'd be interested in although I've not had the camera on me very much today you may have noticed the uh, t-shirt yes it says Cows! Exclamation mark. That was my gift from Craig. He thought it was funny. And, you know, to some it might be because I've got a habit of pointing out cows in my video and shouting. Cows. Bit of an in-joke. All those thousands of people have walked around. I bet not one of them have thought, oh, cows, that's it. So, what did I think of that show? What did you think of it? What did I think of it? Well, it was quite a big one, wasn't it? Awful lot of cars there. A nice big day out. Quite relaxing in some ways. In other ways, not, because an awful lot of walking happened. But the only real thing I wasn't entirely happy with, I suppose, was just how far away we had to go. Being as we were part of the, the actual show on the, you know, a, an exhibitor, uh, yet it was tucked away right in a corner where nobody seemed to even know about. And to be honest, there wasn't a great deal of marshalling going on to help us even find where we were supposed to go in the first place. If it wasn't for um, a lady called Liz, who happened to be in the same place as what we were, who spotted me and said, are you supposed to be here? We'd have gone straight back out of the entrance and gone looking somewhere else again. don't mean to sound like I'm moaning. Instead, I'd like to say thank you to Matthew for the ticket 
to go there in the first place because it's quite an expensive event otherwise. And thank you to Craig for the gift of the cows t-shirt.